Two presidential candidates using vastly different strategies as they prepare for their first in-person standoff in over four years. All eyes will be on the results and a potential clue about former President Trump's vice president pick. NTD's Iris Tao brings us more from the White House. For just a few days until the first debate, President Biden and his team are hunkered down in Camp David, spending the past few days poring over policy books and holding mock debate sessions with no public event. Former President Trump has also been holding informal briefing sessions, but overall he's taking a very different approach by staying active on the campaign trail. Over the weekend, he met with Christian voters in D.C. Christians cannot afford to sit on the sidelines. And courted voters in the key battleground state of Pennsylvania. Murders in Philadelphia reached their highest level in six decades. And on Monday, he's in New Orleans for a fundraiser with GOP allies. When asked about his strategy, Trump said, There's no strategy. We're going to turn it around fast. Meanwhile, Biden's campaign says the sitting president will focus on three issues on Thursday. Democracy, abortion and Trump's economic plans. On Monday, the Biden campaign released a new ad highlighting abortion and Trump's recent conviction. Trump thinks he should not be held accountable for his own criminal actions, but he will let women and doctors be punished. And this week, Biden's campaign is hosting over 300 debate watch parties on debate night alone and over 1,600 additional events across battleground states. Trump will also send a wide range of Republican VP hopefuls to raise cash right in Atlanta, where the debate will take place. That's after Trump said over the weekend that he had already made up his mind on a VP pick and that that person will most likely be there at the Thursday debate. Reporting from the White House, Iris Tao, NTD News. Recent polling showing former President Trump leading President Biden in six key battleground states. According to a recent CBS YouGov poll, the economy, crime and the border top concerns for the majority of voters. Joining me now to assess the debate is Democratic strategist Theron Bond. Theron Bond, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you with us. Theron, as President Biden and former President Trump prepare for their first debate of the 2024 election, uh, the latest polls showing Trump leading uh, President Biden in six key swing states, Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. What does President Biden need to do to turn things around in these key states? The short answer is going to be that President Biden needs to tweak his messaging significantly. As we know, the message is what will resonate with voters or turn them off. And right now, nobody's excited about either of the two candidates. But what President Joe Biden can do is elevate his message. He can actually tweak his message to speak more to younger voters, to speak more to women voters, speak more to black voters. If he starts to pivot now, it may be enough to save this election. And as we all know, democracy is on the ballot. But it's going to take a lot. Right now, people feel like former President Donald Trump rep represents action. Uh, despite the extremity of that action, he does represent action. And right now, President Joe Biden just represents a lot of talk. And we've had almost four years to see that talk turn into action. And a lot of people feel as if it hasn't been enough. You mentioned the younger voters whom President Biden is trying to court, um, and it's becoming more and more difficult uh, for those younger voters to buy houses. Uh, they say it's hard to raise a, a family now. Many have said that they just won't even vote at all this election cycle. What should President Biden's message be to this demographic to get them motivated to vote? The first thing that he can do is completely forgive their student loans. I was extremely fortunate to go to college on a scholarship, but that is not everyone's story. Everyone deserves to be able to access education despite their financial status and whether or not they have scholarships. Should they need to get a loan, they should be able to do that, receive their education, and now have it forgiven. The way President Joe Biden has slow crawled this student debt forgiveness is a Calling. I think a lot of people got really excited and then they didn't. Younger voters want to be able to purchase a house. They want to be able to travel. They want to be able to get passports and travel internationally. They want to be able to go somewhere and buy something without having to worry about being able to pay their bills afterwards or worry about if they're going to be able to afford prescriptions for their elderly relatives. Right now, we're not in the position that we thought we would be. I personally don't own a home 
home for this very reason. It's extremely expensive and the upkeep is expensive also. I don't know that even with with what I do at my millennial age that I wouldn't want a home because of all the things that come along with it, because of the extreme cost, because of the inflation around all the supporting things that have to happen when you when you buy a new home, when you buy a new car. Everything is expensive right now, and people can't fully enjoy their lives because they're worrying about the bills and their adult responsibilities that we all have to care for. I want to get your thoughts, Theron, on a recent political article highlighting President Biden's struggles with black and Hispanic voters, specifically in the key battleground state of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, where the uh, Republican convention is going to be. Um, why are we seeing these numbers and what does President Biden need to do to turn it around uh, in those areas? Black voters want to be excited. We want to feel like we got something for our vote. We give in to something, we give you our support, we give you our dollars, we give you our votes. What is our return on investment? Our investment is our vote into you. What does our vote do for us? What does it do for funding education? What does it do for being able to afford a home? What does it do for being able to take care of children? What does it do for being able to access uh, public transit? What do the, what does our vote do? What does our vote get us? And unfortunately, because we waited so long to see uh, solutions be rectified and problems just go away, now we're like, wait, we want it quickly. And yes, some things take time, but gosh, we've waited a long time. Black voters take up a significant portion of the voter base in the Democratic Party specifically. What is the Democratic Party doing to entertain the voters that uphold the base? Without us, you will not win an election. So what are you doing to entertain us and earn our vote? It should not be understood. It should actually be earned. And that's something that we don't see across the board anymore, not just with the presidential election, but with candidates all across the the United States. What are people doing to earn our votes? They aren't just understood. And most people right now today, if the election happened, would rather sit at home instead of being able to vote for one of the two options for president. The, the apathy is through the roof. Certainly some wisdom in the age, age old cliche of what have you done for me lately? Theron Bond, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.